Hi! I have 10 more tips for you if you're using Tableau, so let's dive in! The first one is about Tableau's default behavior of putting the labels at the bottom when you have a vertical axis. Let's say you have a view like this and all the labels are at the bottom. This poses some challenges because whoever's looking at your chart will need to scroll down and may even miss the labels. So to move the labels up, we can go to Analysis, Table Layout, go to Advanced. And from here, we can uncheck the default property to show the innermost level at the bottom of the view. So once we uncheck this, it's actually going to move all the labels up. It's right here at the top. The second one is quite interesting. I know a lot of people who have spent a lot of time on this. It is about putting a header on a single measure text table. The challenge with a single measure text table is at first glance, you have no idea what you're looking at. We don't know what measure this is. One of the tricks that you can do is to double click on a second measure and remove that measure that you just added. So on filters, click on edit and then uncheck the one that you just added. What this has done is it has introduced the measure names and also replaced the original measure with measure values. And measure names and measure values allow Tableau to display multiple measures and label them accordingly. I've gotten questions on this next one a lot as well. How do you remove the ABC? So it is this ABC right here that we want to remove. One way you can do that is to create a calculated field. I'm just gonna call mine blank. And this is going to be just an empty string. We take this calculated field and we drop that to text and your ABC disappears. I'll show you how you can add quick totals and subtotals in Tableau. Let's say we have this table. The easiest way to add all totals and subtotals is to go to the analytics tab, double click on totals. And by default, it will add all of the corresponding totals and subtotals. So in this case, what we're seeing is a subtotal for country, another subtotal per continent. And at the very bottom of your screen, you also have a grand total. Should you want to remove some subtotals, you can simply click on that dimension. So for example, if we didn't want the totals by country, we can go to that pill and then uncheck subtotals. Do you know that you don't have to have the same aggregation as the rest of your numbers? For example, if you have a sum but your totals are showing a minimum or a maximum. Let's say you have this text table. What you have is the total profit or the sum of profit for each of these values. And by default, Tableau will use the sum of profit as well for your totals. But you can change this. For example, if we simply wanted to get the minimum or the maximum of these values, you can simply click on your measure pill. On the dropdown, you have total using. And by default, this is automatic, but should we want to change it? We can change that aggregation. So for example, I'm just going to select minimum. So in here, drop down, total using, minimum. And now what we get is actually the minimum of the sum. So in here we see the 81 cents and that's what's showing up. Now, if you are going to do this, you have to change the labels because otherwise this is going to be pretty confusing. So we can right click on this total, we're gonna format, and in here we just simply change this. So instead of total, we're just gonna call this minimum. I'm hoping that you're finding this useful so far. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. When you're creating highlight tables with multiple measures, you can have separate color legends for each measure. Let's say you have a text table that has multiple measures. To convert this into a highlight table, we're gonna take this measure values that's currently on text, we're gonna copy that, control drag, copy that onto color, and then we're gonna change our mark to square. The problem with this particular view is all of the values are being compared against the maximum value of your profit. So if you take a look at your color legend, there is one gradient, one range of colors, from $2 to 2,600, which means all of your other values, for example, price, even though the range for this column is really just between the four and the $5 mark, the color is still going to be based against this one range. So what we can do is we can click on the dropdown of the measure values that's currently on color, and there is an option in here to use separate legends. 
And what this does is it actually creates a different color gradient for each of your measures. So you can simply double click on a measure. So for example, average profit, if you wanted to change the color, we can change this. Let's say average price, let's say set that to gray. And at least now, each color gradient is based only on the values of that specific measure. You can view underlying data in Tableau at different levels. The grid on the sidebar allows you to see the underlying data for your data source. So this is all of the records in my underlying data. If you wanted to see the underlying data for the view, you can go to analysis and from here you can view data. What you will find is both a summary tab and a full data tab. Last but not least, you can click on a mark. And from here, you're also going to see this grid icon that allows you to see the underlying data just for that mark. So you're still going to see the summary and the full data tab, but this one, it's only for that particular mark. There is a find feature in groups. Did you know that? There is an easy way in Tableau to create groups based on substrings. For example, let's take a look at track name. This field has as many as almost 2,000 members. So let's just take a look at all the values and perhaps we wanted to get a group of these values based on some keyword. Let's say night. Let's right click on track name, choose create, create a group. And in here in the create group window, we can see that there is actually an option for find. This allows you to choose certain keywords when you're creating your groups. So let's expand on this. And the options that you have when you're finding your members might be based on contains or starts with, or maybe an exact match. So in here, if we're looking for night, we can simply type that in, find everything that has this keyword, and we can select group. And you can see in here, it has automatically found anything that has some keyword that resembles what we've typed in. This next one is all about dual axis charts, the visual cue on how you can easily identify a dual axis chart and also how to create it. I'll show you a few ways. Let's create a time series graph to demonstrate this concept. Let's right click drag invoice date and choose continuous month. And let's choose profit. If we wanted to create a dual axis chart, we first must know where our measure axis is. Our measure axis right now is this sum of profit. And this is on your vertical axis. It's this one. If you wanted to create a dual axis chart, one way you can do it is simply by taking another measure and dragging it to the opposite side of your measure axis. Let's give this a try. Let's say price, drag that over. Once the pill is closer to the edge, you're going to see a dashed line and you're going to see a symbol that resembles a half ruler. Once you see this, release your mouse and this creates our dual axis chart. Notice in here though, one of the visual cues of a dual axis chart is you now have a fused pill. So the two pills that you have in rows they're not two individual pills. They're actually one big pill, and you can see that there's a straight line in the middle. So let me undo this. Another way to create the dual axis chart is by simply dragging your second measure right beside the first measure. And once you have this side by side, if you click on the drop down on the first pill, this is the usual option that you see. However, the second pill will have a new option called dual axis. And just for demonstration, I'm going to drag one more measure right beside our second measure. So the way Tableau works is the moment you have multiple measures on your shelves, your succeeding measure pills will have a dual axis option. So if we select a dual axis option here, it's going to fuse this pill to the previous pill. However, you also have an option of selecting the dual axis from the third pill, which means it's going to fuse this pill with the pill to its left. Let's take a look at that. On the drop down, dual axis, and you can see that this pill is actually that chart that has the two axes. Just a quick note about dual axis charts. When you have dual axis charts, you're going to have two axes. So this is one, and that's a second one. With these two axes, you can also have two different ranges. The first range we can see is from zero to about 240. The second axis, has a range from zero to 90. Should you want this to have different units, you can also have different units. 
the dual axis chart also enables you to have multiple marks. This price pill actually has its own marks card, which means you can control the mark separately from the other pill. So the profit has its own marks card as well. And once you have multiple measures in your shelves, you're going to get an extra marks card called all that allows you to control both of the marks together. If you use calculated fields, if you use formulas, I think this next tip is for you. It is the last, but definitely not the least. I have a time series graph in here. Let me add a quick table calculation for percent difference. One way to get to know some of these auto-generated formulas that you get from Tableau is by opening up a calculated field editor. So from here on the dropdown, let's create calculated field and you can simply drag the pill that has the new formula onto this calculated field editor. And this will show you exactly what was generated when you created that quick table calculation. And you can also do the reverse way. You can select your formula or even portions of your formula. For example, in here, I can decide to get the denominator and drag that back into my shelf and it generates another ad hoc calculation for me. This is definitely one way you can use to get to know your table calculations better. Take a look at what the expressions are underneath the hood, try to understand it a little bit better, and then experiment a little bit more. There you go. Those are all the 10 tips, 10 additional tips. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully there's something that you learned. If you haven't seen my previous 10 tips, I'll link it up in the card. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.